Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the femoral triangle. To begin with, this diagram shows the anterior aspect of the thigh. This is its lateral aspect, that is a part away from the midline of the body. And here is its medial aspect, that is a part near to the midline of the body. Here you can see the ASIS, this is the sartorius muscle and here is the inguinal ligament. So the femoral triangle is nothing but a triangular depression as you can see right here on the front of the upper one third of the thigh immediately below the inguinal ligament that is a structure in green that you see right here. So this entire triangular area is the femoral triangle. Now looking at the boundaries of the femoral triangle, laterally it is bounded by the medial border of the sartorius muscle. Here you can see the sartorius muscle, this is the lateral aspect and this is its medial aspect. So the femoral triangle is bounded laterally by the medial border of the sartorius muscle. Now medially the femoral triangle is bounded by the medial border of the adductor longus muscle. Here is the adductor longus muscle and here is its medial border. Now the base of the triangle is formed by the inguinal ligament that you can see right here. And the apex is directed downwards formed by a point where the medial and lateral boundaries of the triangle cross right here. Now the roof of the femoral triangle is formed by certain structures that is mainly the overlying skin, the superficial fascia beneath it, then the deep fascia. Now this superficial fascia consists of certain important structures like the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, the branches of the ilioinguinal nerve, the superficial branches of the femoral artery and the accompanying veins. So these are the structures that form the roof of the femoral triangle. The superficial fascia contains certain important structures as well. Finally, looking at the floor of the femoral triangle, it is formed medially by the adductor longus and pectineus muscle and laterally by the psoas major and iliacus muscle that you see right here. Concising the important points that we learned till now, the femoral triangle is a triangular depression on the front of the upper one third of the thigh immediately below the inguinal ligament. Looking at its boundaries, the femoral triangle is bounded laterally by the medial border of the sartorius muscle medially by the medial border of the adductor longus muscle, the base is formed by the inguinal ligament and the apex that is directed downwards and forwards is formed by the point where the medial and lateral boundaries cross. The apex is continuous below with the adductor canal. Now the roof of the femoral triangle is formed by skin, superficial fascia and deep fascia and the superficial fascia contains important structures like the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, the branches of the ilioinguinal nerve and the superficial branches of the femoral artery with the accompanying veins. The floor of the femoral triangle is formed medially by the adductor longus and pectineus muscle and laterally by the psoas major and the iliacus muscle. Now let's learn about the contents of the femoral triangle. So in order to remember the structures easily as we learn them, we'll be following a particular order. That is first we'll be looking at the artery that is seen in the femoral triangle, then a vein. Then we'll be talking about certain nerves that can be seen in the femoral triangle, then the lymph nodes and finally we'll be talking about a sheath. So looking at the first structure that is the artery, we have the femoral artery and its branches. Here you can see this is the femoral artery. It travels through the triangle from its base at the mid inguinal point as you can see right here to the apex of the triangle right here. Now in the triangle the femoral artery gives off six branches. Out of the six branches three are superficial branches and three are deep branches. The next content that we are going to look at is a vein. So we have the femoral vein in the femoral triangle that you see right here and its tributaries. So the femoral vein accompanies the femoral artery as you can see right here it lies medial to it. So the femoral vein is medial to the artery at the base of the triangle and it is posteromedial to the artery at the apex as you can see right here. It receives the great saphenous vein 
the circumflex veins and also other veins that corresponds to the branches of the femoral artery. Now before we learn about the nerves and lymph nodes of the femoral triangle, we need to understand that there is a thin sheath that encloses the upper 4 centimeters of the femoral vessels that is the femoral vein and the femoral artery. Imagine that there is a thin sheath that covers its upper 4 centimeters. Now this sheath is termed to be the femoral sheath. We will be learning about the femoral sheath in detail later on. Now let us look at the nerves of the femoral triangle. So the first nerve that can be seen in the femoral triangle is the femoral nerve. Here you can see the femoral nerve. It lies lateral to the femoral artery. It lies outside the femoral sheath right here and in the groove between the iliacus muscle and the psoas major muscle. In this diagram you can see the femoral nerve more clearly. The nerve to pectineus arises from the femoral nerve just above the inguinal ligament. It passes behind the femoral sheath to reach the anterior surface of the pectineus muscle that you see right here. So the nerve to the pectineus is the second nerve that we need to remember. Now in this diagram again you can see here is the femoral nerve and there is one branch that arises that is the nerve to pectineus. And thirdly, we have to see the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Here you can see the genitofemoral nerve. It has branches. So we are talking about the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. And it will extend towards the femoral triangle. So it occupies the lateral compartment of the femoral sheath in the femoral triangle along with the femoral artery. And its main function is that it supplies most of the skin over the femoral triangle. So it will supply mainly the skin over the femoral triangle. So that is about the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. Now looking at the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh that you see right here, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Now this nerve crosses the lateral angle of the triangle as you can see if this is the femoral triangle it will cross the lateral angle of the femoral triangle. It runs on the lateral side of the thigh and ends by dividing into anterior and posterior branches. It supplies the anterolateral aspect of the thigh and the lateral aspect of the gluteal region respectively. Now after having learned about the nerves, let us look at the lymph nodes. So mainly we have the deep inguinal lymph nodes that you see right here. They lie deep to the deep fascia. They lie medial to the upper part of the femoral vein as you can see right here and they receive lymph from the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Concising the important points that we learnt under the contents of the femoral triangle, mainly we have the femoral artery and its branches. The femoral artery traverses the triangle from its base at the mid inguinal point to the apex. In the triangle it gives us six branches that is three superficial and three deep branches. The next content is a femoral vein and its tributaries. The femoral vein accompanies the femoral artery. The vein is medial to the artery at the base of the triangle and posteromedial to the artery at the apex of the triangle. It receives the great saphenous vein, the circumflex veins and the veins corresponding to the branches of the femoral artery. The femoral sheath encloses the upper 4 cm of the femoral vessels that is the femoral vein and the femoral artery. Looking at the nerves, we have the femoral nerve which lies lateral to the femoral artery, outside the femoral sheath and in the groove between the iliacus and the psoas major muscle. The nerve to the pectineus arises from the femoral nerve just above the inguinal ligament and passes behind the femoral sheath to reach the anterior surface of the pectineus muscle. Next we have the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. It occupies the lateral compartment of the femoral sheath along with the femoral artery. It supplies most of the skin over the femoral triangle. Then we have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh that crosses the lateral angle of the triangle, runs on the lateral side of the thigh and ends by dividing into an anterior and posterior branch. It supplies the anterolateral aspect of the thigh and the lateral aspect of the gluteal region respectively. Then we have the deep inguinal lymph nodes that lie deep to the deep fascia. It lies medial to the upper part of the femoral vein. It receives lymph from the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Next let's learn about the femoral sheath in detail. It is a funnel shaped sleeve of fascia that encloses the upper 3 to 4 centimeters of the femoral vessels as you can see in this diagram. 
This particular sheath is formed by the downward extension of two layers of fascia of the abdomen. So in this diagram, let's understand how the femoral sheath is formed. So here you can see the ilium bone. Here is the iliacus muscle. Right here is the femoral artery. And this is the femoral sheath that covers it. So the anterior wall of the femoral sheath is formed by the downward extension of the fascia transversalis that you see right here. The fascia transversalis lies in the anterior abdominal wall deep to the transversus abdominis muscle that you see right here. So that is about the anterior wall of the sheath. Now looking at the posterior wall of the femoral sheath, it is formed by the downward extension of the fascia iliaca which covers the iliacus muscle right here. Now next we need to understand that the femoral sheath is asymmetrical. That is the lateral wall is vertical as you can see right here and the medial wall is oblique. It is directed downwards and laterally. The femoral sheath is divided into three compartments by septa. The first is the lateral or arterial compartment. The second is the intermediate or venous compartment and the third is the medial or the lymphatic compartment. This diagram shows a cross section of the femoral triangle. So here we can see the femoral sheath and its three compartments. This is the lateral aspect and this is the medial aspect. So this is the lateral compartment, this is the intermediate compartment and this is the medial compartment. In the lateral compartment or the arterial compartment, we can mainly see the femoral artery that you see in red right here and the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve that is seen in yellow right here. Now in the intermediate or venous compartment, we can see the femoral vein and the medial or the lymphatic compartment, you can see the lymph node in it. It is the smallest and this compartment is called the femoral canal. Now before we learn about the femoral canal in detail, Let's concise what we learnt under the femoral sheath. It is a funnel shaped sleeve of fascia enclosing the upper 3 to 4 cm of femoral vessels. The sheath is formed by the downward extension of the two layers of the fascia of the abdomen. That is the anterior wall of the sheath is formed by the fascia transversalis which lies in the anterior abdominal wall deep to the transversus abdominis muscle. The posterior wall is formed by the fascia iliaca which covers the iliacus muscle. The femoral sheath is asymmetrical, the lateral wall is vertical and the medial wall is oblique which is directed downwards and laterally. The sheath is divided mainly into three compartments by septa, the lateral or the arterial compartment which consists of the femoral artery and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve, the intermediate or venous compartment which comprises the femoral vein and the medial or lymphatic compartment which consists of the lymph nodes and is the smallest known as the femoral canal. So next let's look at the femoral canal in detail. The femoral canal is a medial compartment of the femoral sheath. It is conical in shape. It is wide above and narrow below. Looking at its length, it is 1.5 cm long and 1.5 cm wide at the base. Now the base or the upper end that you see right here is called the femoral ring. In this diagram, we can see the cross-sectional view. Here is the abdominal muscles, here is the pectineus adductor longus and here we can see the femoral canal. So in order to understand the boundaries of the femoral ring, let's look right here. Anteriorly, it is bounded by the inguinal ligament that you see right here. Posteriorly, it is bounded by the pectineus muscle and its covering fascia that is the pectineal fascia as you see right here. Medially, it is formed by the concave margin of the lacuna ligament right here and laterally it is bounded by the septum that separates it from the femoral vein. Now we need to understand that the femoral ring is closed by a condensation of extra peritoneal connective tissue which is called the femoral septum. Right here in green you can see the femoral septum. So it covers the femoral ring. Now the parietal peritoneum covering the septum from above shows a depression which is called the femoral fossa. Here you can see the femoral fossa. Now this femoral canal contains a lymph node that you see in grey right here which is called the lymph node of Glockwitt or Rosenmuller. The femoral canal also contains certain other lymphatics 
and also some amount of areola tissue. Now, concisely the important points that we learnt under the femoral canal. It is a medial compartment of the femoral sheath. It is conical in shape, wide above and narrow below. It is 1.5 cm long and 1.5 cm wide at the base. The base or the upper end is termed to be the femoral ring. Looking at its boundaries, anteriorly it is bounded by the inguinal ligament, posteriorly by the pectineus and its covering fascia, medially by the concave margin of the lacunar ligament and laterally by the septum separating it from the femoral vein. The femoral ring is closed by a condensation of extra peritoneal connective tissue which is called the femoral septum. Then we have the parietal peritoneum covering the septum from above that shows a depression which is called the femoral fossa. And finally, the femoral canal contains a lymph node called the lymph node of Cloquet or Rosenmuller and also contains lymphatics and small amount of areola tissue. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy associated with the femoral triangle, Femoral hernia can occur, that is a femoral canal is an area of potential weakness in the abdominal wall through which the abdominal contents may bulge out which forms femoral hernia. It is more common in females. Now another condition could be an injury to the femoral nerve which can cause sensory loss on the anterior aspect of the thigh and the front of the leg. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of femoral triangle as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my website www.angelinaisaac.com, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.